Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to An English Haunting. And in the last episode, guys, we began our search for components for the Box of Revelation. And we started off by giving the bad news about Florence's condition to a former lover who, despite that, does not want to go see her. Now, we think we can switch some business cards, but that's kind of cut off to us right now. We're moving on to something else. And we went into this uh, horror bookshop and read some really cool little, uh, little novellas here. I enjoyed that. We've got a cash register here and the bookseller himself. Let's go ahead and talk to him. You mentioned I could test my knowledge. Indeed, about fantastical and horror literature. I will ask you questions on the subject and you must answer correctly. What do I win if I answer all the a questions correctly? An achievement. A what? An achievement for you if you answer them correctly. No one has aced them all. Ah, and anything else? My respect and admiration. Oh. I don't know a whole lot about horror literature, believe it or not, so... I think I should be going. As the gentleman desires. These doors will always be open to you. If there is a greater passion than fantasy literature for me, it is money. Hence, I implore you to stay clear of the cash register. It does have bills to pay. This is a nice shop. That's cool that they tell you flat out, hey, it's for an achievement. That's nice that they have that, though. Kind of want to test yourself. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. The receptionist informed me that Professor Bennett's office is on this floor. It must be one of these two doors. Try to say these and those at the same time. Silas Bennett, archaeologist. I'm not well versed in Mayan culture, but I would swear this is the temple of Kukulan. A Moai from Easter Island. It's still unknown what these statues represent or what purpose they served. The Great Sphinx of Giza. The mysteries surrounding ancient Egypt have always fascinated society. Knowing this, and capitalizing on the popularity of archaeology, many professionals delve into both tomb raiding and patrons' pockets. Information panel. Hello, sir. Ooh, we can actually talk to you. The text attempts to justify the looting of the exhibited pieces from the colonialism of the British Empire. According to the plaques, these are archaeological pieces found near the Amber Fort in the state of Rajasthan. Thomas Lester, Restorer. A depiction of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that buried the city of Pompeii in ash. The framed newspaper clipping next to the painting announces an imminent excavation at the site by prominent members of the London Archaeological Society. I know where the lost city of Z is. P. Fawcett. <laughs> I guess we could talk to the Restorer. Um, eventually. I kind of want to wait for the archeolo or archaeologist to walk by so I can talk to them. Oh, he seems to be in a hurry. Never mind, then. This is his door. Uh, Professor Bennett? Is anyone there? Sir? Yes? Are you looking for Professor Bennett? Yes, I'd like to inquire about certain matters. I regret to inform you that I haven't seen him around here for days. Oh, do you know where I could find him? I believe he embarked on one of those dubious expeditions that cast doubt on our profession. Out of place artifacts. 
Bah. I think Professor Bennett made a mistake in pursuing this profession. Or worse, he's lost his mind. Uh, do you know when he'll return? I have the slightest idea. Ask Oscar. Who? Oscar Koenig, his assistant. A very promising young German who unfortunately shares Professor Bennett's delusions. Do you know where I could find him? I've called the office, but no one answered. He'll be back. Do not worry. If there's no other choice, I'll come back later. Thank you for the information, Mr... Lester. Thomas Lester. Okay, well, maybe we do have to come back here a little bit later. Is there anything else here before we... Hmm. All right. No one there. Seeing if anything has changed since we last came through. Nope. Through the alley we go. We got William Crook's residence. We already visited that. Silas Bennett's office. Nowhere to go but Eugene Wood's photo studio now. I understand the situation, but now's not the right time to go see Patty. What? Listen here, lad. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Oh, yes, yes, I apologize. Ain't you saying we won't keep Patty waiting? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm not saying that. But understand, I'm in the middle of a photo shoot. The camera's loaded. I just need to touch up the deceased and... No, I won't be able to pay Patty if I don't do this job. The Perkins sisters pay well, you know? Mate, you'd have to photograph loads of dead bodies to pay off what you owe, Patty. This place is getting on my nerves, Brian. Let's sort off. You heard me, mate, corpse snapper. So shift it. Who are you? Oi, this geezer looks familiar. I don't know what's going on here, but it seems like you two are in charge. Would you be so kind as to grab me a few minutes with Mr. Wood? M maybe he's a customer. Let me have a word with him. Shut it, snapper. Yeah, sorry. Request denied. And now, move out of the way. Unless you want us to move you. Good lad. Off you go. J just a moment, please. Now what the hell's going on? M Miss Constance, Miss Adelia, please stay. I it's all a misunderstanding that I'll, sure I'll sort out shortly. Do you want us to call the Bobbies, Mr. Wood? No, Constance, no! Listen up, ladies. If you're planning to call up the Bobbies, let me know. Because if you do, I'll cut your tongues out so you can't. Oh! Oh! No Bobbies, got it? Hey, you. We waste enough time. Let's scarpa. You heard him. Tongue or Bobbies? Which it'll be? Uh, oh? Right. Are you both all right? No. At least we've still got our tongues. Is that... Oh, that is literally the corpse. Okay, interesting. Constance and Adelia Perkins. Got photographs, a camera, furniture. Check the foreground. That sweet, sweet pixel hunt. Oh, a ladder. I know where we can get a ladder to get another ladder. I am deeply sorry for your loss. Thank you very much, sir. Where did they take the photographer? Seen that bold act of thievery, did you? What's the world coming to? King George should kick all those Irish out of our land. Whoa. They were Paddy's men, sir. 
It seems Mr. Wood has done business with the wrong person. Paddy? Who is Paddy? Where can I find them? How would we know, eh? Suggest we mix up with that lot, are you? I was just asking. Paddy usually operates in St. Giles. Wood as he runs his business from a tavern there. I didn't know to give them an Irish accent. Well, how do you even know that? Read it in the papers. Stick to the society pages, sister. You read too much. Anyway, why are you so interested in those people? They are not our kind. They live among us, sister. The Irish, Italians, Poles, the... Oh, enough. What are you trying to tell me? Now we have to worry about them like we do the poor street children. We worry about the street children? Who do you think the proceeds from the charity market we organize every Christmas go to? That is not good enough, Constance. Uh, excuse my sister Adelia, sir. Reading those progressive newspapers seems to have altered her conscience. I'm only saying that... Quiet, Adelia. This gentleman is not interested in your utopian fantasies. I uh, see you're carrying a bouquet of flowers, Miss Perkins. Violets, my brother's favorite. My wish is that he's photog uh, photographed with them. Do you want me to place the violets in your brother's hands? N not yet. I'll do it when he's about to be photographed. I can put them in water if you like. They may be spoilt. Uh, don't insist, sir. I'll place them in Bertram's hands when he's about to be photographed. Well, what will you do if the photographer does it not show up? The undertaker himself will come fetch our Bertram in a couple of hours. Hope Mr. Wood's back by then. I would not count on it, sister. You are too pessimistic, Adelia. What do you think? I... She is such a pessimist, isn't she? Well, I hope that the whole matter will get sorted out. Ooh, it's a briefcase. The briefcase is brimming with cosmetics. More fitting for a mortician than a conventional photographer. All these individuals were deceased when they were photographed. Like those on that wall. And the ones in those frames on the floor. Was there anything? Nope. Okay. Let's look at the deceased. Ew. He has empty eye sockets. And we don't wish to remember our brother in such a state. The photographer said he would fix it. How? Maybe with the cosmetics now? Camera? The camera stands prepared, loaded for the photograph. Pray tell, you do not intend to photograph poor Bertram in his current state, do you? What state? His eyes are absent. You cannot immortalize him thus. That's, that's fair. I see nothing of interest in this piece of furniture. Perhaps the drawers hold some aid. Only photo albums. Let me inspect the other drawer. More albums of photographs. I can't reach it. There's a similar one in the professor's workshop. So we got a crystal flask, a business card. And it's securely locked. So is there anywhere to go? Did we get another area unlocked to us? Oh, yes, we did. St. Giles. Look at all these places, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I thought that dog was going to come right for us. Just like, oh, God. An old brook soaps and covering a cobbustle soda one. Or soaps ad. 
most of the letters are missing, it's completely illegible. On the other hand, I deal for a criminal front. This is an honest establishment, mate. <laughs> Guy. Alright, ca oh, cask. There's a coin on top of the barrel. Strange that nobody noticed it until now. Oh, that's going to get us into the theater. It's a penny. Oh, you lost, mate. No, I know exactly where I'm going. Is that so? Oi, oi, stop. Where do you think you're going? To have a pint. Only strong drinks are served here. You don't look like you can handle even a glass of milk. So tell me, what brings you here? That's none of your business. Oh yes, believe me, it is. I'm asking you, where do you think you're going? I need to see Patty. And does Patty want to see you? I don't think he will wait for me, but I must speak to him urgently. You don't seem like the kind of person who needs Patty's help. Actually, it's Eugene Wood who needs help. Eugene, Eugene. Ah, yes, the photographer. He's dead. What? Or he should be by now. That broke has let Patty down, you know. And the boss does not like take kindly to that kind of betrayal. Let me talk to him, please. I need him alive. No disintegrations. Hmm. A uh, yeah, copper? Who? Me? No. Press? No, I'm just a simple university professor. Ha! <laughs> a professor? This'll be fun. Go on. Tell Killian you can see Paddy. Thank you very much. <laughs> a professor? From a university? What the? Hey, uh, you. Come closer. How'd you get in here? The guy at the door gave me permission. Declan's been letting in a lot of riffraff lately. I told him I need to see Paddy urgently and that Kieran would allow me to see him. Kieran? Who the hell is Kieran? You don't mean Killian. Oh, yes, Killian. Sorry. All their names sound the same to you, eh, bloody English? Killian's the guy at the door. Oh, yes, I see. One moment. Is Larry Foley sending you? Who? Foley, the Catholic. I do not know who that is. The Taylor brothers. I'm not acquainted with them. The Bowery boys. I do not know any of the people you mentioned, sir. You don't know them, eh? Patsy has many enemies. So I hope you don't try anything you'll regret. Is that clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not here to stir up trouble. That's the way I like it. There's Killian for you. And remember, if you try anything foolish, I won't be walking out of here alive, I suppose. Aye? Patty's men? Patty's men? Spittoon, drinks, jars. Okay, must examine things before we do anything else. It's a list of names and amounts of money. I suppose that... Hey! That's none of your business. Got it? Apologies for my curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. Authentic Irish liquor. Not the watery crap you lot are used to be drinking. filled with cigarette butts. Got these blokes to take it outside if they want to spit. Now I'm trying to get them to toss their butts in here instead of on the floor. This place is still a pigsty, but I don't want it to look like one. You catch my drift? Oh, yes. 
Red. Hey. Leave Fergal alone. He's not having a good day today. Oh, I didn't mean to bother him. Good. Otherwise you'd be find out why they call him the Butcher. The Butcher. Paddy's men? They're talking to each other. I should not interrupt them. Freshly baked. It smells delicious. Yes, doesn't it? Looks appetizing. Irish bread. Bloody hell, when I was a prisoner in Majuba, they fed us the same food as the pigs. That still tasted better than English food. May I have a piece? Keep your hands off the bread. It's for the boys. Just simple pickling jars and... Oh, how disgusting. One of the jars is filled with rotten eggs floating in a vi vicious, er, viscous liquid. Eh, what the devil? What are you on about? This jar of boiled eggs. It's in bad condition. Are you sure? The eggs are green, sir. Are you suggesting I'm serving rotten eggs to these gents knowing they've gone bad? Uh, no, I I'm not saying that. Think I'd give Patty's men food poisoning out of negligence? Uh, no, maybe you just didn't realize the jar was bad? You don't like seeing that on the counter, eh? It is certainly unpleasant. Fine. Take the jar if you don't want to see it on the counter. What do I do with the... I said take it. Well, Alright. No need to get testy. The contents are so rotten I can't even open the lid due to corrosion. That's your problem now. Well, thanks for the rotten eggs, I suppose. All right, Killian. Let's make sure everything else is good. Yep. Killian, right? What do you want? I need to see Patty. The chap at the door said to talk to you. So the door blew, okay? Hold on a moment. What are you looking at? Looking at me? Come with me. Stay put, Percival. Behave yourself, Percival. We've got a visitor. Killian, here by me side. And ye, come closer. I know this lad, Paddy. He was in the photographer's studio. I reckon he was also poking around the Red Lion. Well, well. Seems you know us, but we don't know ye. Could you do us the favor of introducing yourself, sir? I am... My name is Patrick Moore. I'm a university professor. Oh, professor. And you're here to give us private lessons, Mr. Moore. I'm not here to cause trouble. For what Liam says, it seems so. Your man commented that he has seen me at the Red Lion and at Eugene Wood's studio. Believe me when I tell you that the places I have been and what has brought me to talk to you have been purely by chance. I believe you, Mr. Marr. You don't fit the bill of my enemy. And if I were in, if you were, I fear you wouldn't leave here alive. Aye, lads. And I'm not here to give private lessons. Relax, Mr. Marr. Twas but a jest. Why is everything so dark here? Does it intimidate you, Mr. Marr? I felt intimidated from the moment I walked through that door. The darkness. That chained dog that looks like he hasn't been eaten in weeks. Not to mention that machete on the table. Everything in this room intimidates me. I have what they call a touch of photophobia, hence the darkness. As for Percival, he's just overly enthusiastic. Regarding the machete, indeed, it's there to intimidate. So get to the point, Mr. Moore. 
what's it you be wanting from me now? I would like to be able to talk to Eugene Wood. If it's all right with you, of course. Ah, I reckon there's a bit of a problem. But how he should be pushing up daisies by now. Or maybe he's still kicking. Who knows for sure? You know what, Mr. Moore? Mr. Wood came to me because his business was going downhill. And I ain't surprised one bit. Who in their right mind wants a photograph of a dead loved one? Can you picture it, Mr. Moore? Take a gander at me photo album, Mrs. Parker. Here's me Uncle James in his officer's uniform, and here's me niece Violet. Ah, and here's a snap of me four-year-old daughter's corpse. Repulsive. So I lent him a tidy sum to save his business. I respect a business vision, no matter how grim. One of me mottos is, if you are making it in life, find something to sell and sell it. You want to make it. But time went by and he couldn't settle his debt. I gave him several chances before today. It ain't personal, but I got to keep a business running. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Moore. Amongst me ventures are smuggling, prostitution, and extortion. I know this info would be gold for Scotland Yard as a confession. But we know Mr. Moore here won't spill a word. Ain't that right, Liam? Ah, wouldn't be in his best interest. In other ventures, I tend to turn a blind eye. A whore forgets to pay me. A couple of smacks and it's sorted. Some poor sod resistant extortion. A little scare and settled. But borrowing money from me pocket and not paying it back? Oh, Mr. Moore. That's a sin. And it's paid for with death. Like I said, it ain't personal. I got nothing against Eugene Wood. He's a fine photographer. I'd even ask him to snap photos at me daughter's wedding. But I gotta send these kinds of messages to those who want to take me for a ride, you know? And nobody takes me for a ride. Got it. You've made that quite clear. I'm curious, what's your interest in that corpse photographer? I'm interested in one of his photographic plates. Do you fancy photography, Mr. Marr? It's part of my job. But my interest in that plate is of a scientific nature. I have no idea what you're talking about, and frankly, I couldn't care less. But I think you won't be getting anything out of that photographer. Is there nothing I can do? Is there still time for me to repay his debt? That came straight from the heart, eh? He was a desperate move. E yes, in fact, yes. However, I do not have the funds at the moment. But I'd be willing to get that money. Not you're a man of means. They don't pay you much at that university, do they? You should do business with me. It'd be more lucrative. I prefer to stay on the right side of the law. The man of principles, Paddy. It's a thousand pounds, Mr. Marr. Interest included. That's the amount Mr. Wood owes me. A thousand pounds? I, I still believe I can raise that much. I must do it. This is a life we're talking about. Hmm. Who's taking care of Mr. Wood? Brian. Brian, the limp one. No, the other. Oh, may God have mercy on that poor bastard. Means he's been taken to... The farm, aye. That place is far away. Ideal sport for, for screams not to be heard. Brian likes to take his time, doesn't he? Indeed. Before getting down to business, he likes to feel his belly and have a nap. Hmm. I reckon it might be your lucky day, Mr. Moore. Gillian. Yes? Mr. Moore here is going to make us happy by gathering a thousand pounds in a nice envelope. Tell me, who's at the door? Declan. Go tell Declan to get one of his lads. To run like the devil to that farm and tell Brian not to do anything until further notice. With any luck, Brian wouldn't have started his... job. Right away, Paddy. That for... 
photographic plate must be very valuable to you for you to get mixed up in this mess, Mr. Marr. It's a crucial part of a technology project I'm working on. Still, damn it, I'd do anything to save a life. Oh, we're dealing with an idealist. That's honorable, Mr. Marr. But take a look around you. Life in this city is worth nothing. One thousand pounds in Mr. Wood's case. Oh, touche. Done, Paddy. Right. Mr. Moore, I reckon the situation's nothing but an act of faith. You ain't sure if Mr. Woods is still breathing. And I ain't sure if you can come up with all that money. I hope you understand. I do. All right. There ain't nothing more to add. Gillian, see Mr. Moore out, will you? He's got a job to do. You heard the boss. So hurry up. Oh, and the bill's in an envelope. Don't be daft enough to go flaunting the money out in these streets. What in the blazes have you done? Let me see if you got this right. If I got this right. That he gives you 300 pounds to bet on one round Jack. The champion. The unbeatable. The one they call one round because he knocks his opponents in the first round. He knocks them out. And you bet on Walter Black. Why? I don't know. Those blokes told me I wouldn't have the guts to bet on Black. They wounded me pride, you know. Oh, for the love of God. What are you, five years old? Remember when I told you someday your pride would land you in hot water? Well, a day has come. What do I do now? The one only thing I can think of is for you to beat yourself up to you disfigure your face. If Paddy catches you, tell him you're for the you're the slow cousin from Belfast. Disappear. Oh, why? Because when Paddy finds out, he'll move heaven and earth to find you. Damn it. Curses. Oh, I guess you're right. I reckon I'll hide in. I don't want to know you, fool. I suppose it's no use to me now. Well, I guess this is goodbye. Be off with you, Michael. Damn idiot. What do you got in the spittoon? Inside is a piece of paper dropped by one of Paddy's men. It's a betting slip for a boxing match. One round Jack versus Walter Black. The bet is in favor of the latter. Do you know where the one round Jack versus Walter Black fight is taking place? Huh? If you know where the one round Jack versus Walter Black fight is taking place. Why? You gonna place a bet? I don't know. I've never bet on any game. Oh, for God's sake. The fight's happening down at the docks. There's a warehouse near the old Wuppertin factory they fixed up for boxing matches. Well, we have a place to go, guys. Sorry for butchering the Irish accent there, but um, I think we have an idea of what we need to do to get that money. And we will check that out in the next episode. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.